Sleeper cars basically go a lot faster than they look. And in this video, I'm talking to you about five in particular that depreciated down to around the 30k and below mark, all five of which are pretty unassuming and very quick. So if you like sleeper cars and want to see different price ranges, then do let me know by clicking the like button, subscribe as well if you're new and up. Further ado, let's get straight into it. <laughs> Let's kick this video off with the VW t rock R, a high performance compact SUV which was introduced in 2019 to combine typical SUV practicality and versatility with a bit of performance and aggression, but aesthetically it's genuinely not a million miles away from an R-line t rock which can easily fool a non-car person into thinking they're seeing yet another little SUV in a world where SUVs are continuing to be the best selling cars out there. The t rock R comes with a 2 litre turbocharged inline 4 engine which puts out 295 brake horsepower and will manage not to 60 in 4.7 seconds which is pretty rapid for a compact SUV. Part of this pace has come from it being tested and optimized at the Nurburgring, which is pretty huge for an SUV with around 400 liters of luggage capacity. I've actually driven the T-Roc R-Line, not the R, and I can tell you it does offer a very smooth, comfortable, practical, and genuinely enjoyable driving experience, if a little bit boring. But this boring factor is kind of what makes this car a sleeper. On the inside, it's definitely not a sleeper, with the nice sporty seats and dashboard, with a lap timer embedded into the instrument cluster, reminding you that this car is actually actually about speed. It comes with dynamic chassis control, a performance braking system, torque vectoring, driving profiles, and even an optional Akrapovich exhaust system to let the car sing. It really is well equipped for a compact SUV. This is the most expensive car on the list though, starting at around £28,000, with £30,000 getting you a 2020 model with around 40,000 miles on the clock. As it's so new, there aren't too many problems to shout about, but that engine is shared with other VW Group offerings, so we can learn from those. Weird turbo noises or loss of power from the turbo are known and suspension noises have also been noted by some owners. When the Kia Stinger GTS was released in 2017, it shocked the world. It was Kia's first entry into luxury sports cars and showed that the brand known for cars like the Picanto and their amazing warranties really could design and develop something with a bit of performance. Now, if you're a car person, you'll 100% know the Stinger GTS is a performance car, but for the average person, it's a Kia. It comes with a 3.3 litre twin turbocharged V6 engine, which makes 365 brake horsepower taking it from 0 to 60 in 4.7 seconds, but that doesn't tell the whole story of this car's performance. It has adaptive dampers, a limited slip diff, Brembo brakes, and variable ratio steering, all focused around getting the car to handle as well as it goes, which makes sense considering it was also developed at the Nürburgring like the t rock It was designed by Peter Schreyer, the same man who was heavily involved in the design of the original Audi TT. The interior too is a nice place to be, and I've had the chance to sit in one and take a good look around. It's quite a simple design, it looks a little bit like a Volvo in there, but it still has nice premium materials. What's crazy about this car now though is how cheap it is. Given brand new it was around the £41,000 mark in base spec, now you'll find them listed anywhere from around the £23,000 mark, with thirty grand getting you a 2020 model with just 20,000 miles on the clock. Again, it's another newish car, so reliability isn't something to worry about too much, and Kia's 7 year warranty makes this a very tasty pick. However, that warranty doesn't cover stuff like pothole damage, and parts for the car have proven to be relatively expensive expensive, so worth being aware of. I've got another compact SUV for you now, and it actually sits on the same platform as the t rock we just spoke about, the Audi SQ2, which was released in 2018, with the first model seeing the roads around the 2019 model year. Where the R is the top of the range t rock with the R badge being the range topper for the VW brand more broadly, the SQ2 doesn't actually carry Audi's top tier RS badge. For this reason, it's not quite as aesthetically aggressive as cars like the RS7 or TTRS, which are more obviously performance cars. The SQ2 therefore slides under the radar as an SUV with surprising performance, thanks to its 2 litre turbocharged inline 4 engine, which makes 295 brake horsepower, taking it from 0 to 60 in 4.6 seconds, ever so slightly quicker than the t rock despite having the same engine, which is also shared with cars like the Audi S3. It's typically Audi both outside and in, with the newer, more angular design language on the exterior, and a pretty sporty interior that comes with cool features like diamond stitched seats, a flat bottomed, race inspired steering steering wheel and quite a large infotainment screen on the dash. It also came with some slightly different colour choices in case you wanted to push the boat out a bit like the Tango Red and Vegas Yellow. In my eyes though, despite those colours, it's quite a boring looking and sounding car overall, not something shouty or aggressive, which all in helps us to be cemented as a sleeper in my books. £25,000 will get you into one of these and 30 k will get you a 2020 model with around 40,000 miles on it. Reliability is a similar story to the t rock with the odd software glitches on the infotainment and some minor electrical issues to be aware 
aware of. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you are, a like would be much appreciated. As I said, I'll make some more videos on sleepers if you like this video. And let me know in the comments down below what your favorite ever sleeper car is. It can be whatever you deem to be a sleeper car. Some people prefer cars that are tuned. Some people prefer cars that are just a sleeper from standard. Let me know in the comments down below. The Volvo V90 TA embodies everything that a sleeper needs to be. Unassuming, comfortable, sedate, and unbelievably cool if you know about it. It comes from the second generation V90, unveiled in 2016, and it's genuinely a very interesting car despite its very normal appearance, with its 2 litre turbocharged and supercharged inline 4 engine mixed with an electric motor, making it a plug-in hybrid, putting out a combined 401 brake horsepower, imagine not to 60 in 4.6 seconds, helped by the fact that it's all-wheel drive. I absolutely love a fast estate, as it's kind of the perfect class for sleepers, and Volvo are renowned for their history in building fast, sleeperish estates. I mentioned it's all-wheel drive. Now, the engine powers the front wheels and the electric motor powers the rears, making it such an interesting little system. If you want to go electric only, it should do around 20 to 30 miles, which is, again, decent if you're a city driver like myself. Aesthetically, I think it looks quite nice despite being very unassuming with the Thor's hammer headlights, which have become typical on Volvos. On the interior, it's also very standard Volvo, not over the top, not shouty, just simple and effective. It's not even particularly sporty in there. It's more focused on simple luxury, which I personally really like. You get to waft around in luxury with no one looking at the car, but when the time comes, it will absolutely shift. These start at around £24,000 and £30,000 get your 2018 model with around 40,000 miles on the clock. The main problems I've seen owners mention on forums include software issues, battery charging problems, and braking vibrations, which may have relevance to the regenerative braking system. Taking the top spot in this video is a car that you simply wouldn't expect to have a 5 litre V8 engine, putting up 417 brake horsepower and managing 0 to 60 in 4.6 seconds. Not bad at all. The Lexus ISF is the oldest car on the list by a long way, introduced in 2007 alongside the concept for the incredible LFA, having been developed at the Nürburgring, which seems to be a bit of a theme in this video. But it wasn't just produced at the ring, much of the suspension tuning was done at Fuji Speedway in Japan, and its chief engineer had previously worked intensely on the Supra, so it was certainly developed in good hands. It aimed to compete with cars like the C63 AMG and M3, and compared to the standard IS, it has definitely got more aggressive stylings, but not so much that you'd see it and think that it was a V8 engine super saloon. One thing that's very obvious on these is the stacked quad exhaust, which are sadly entirely fake and just built into the bumper. It's a real shame, but the actual exhaust sit right behind the bumper. If you look closer, you can see through the bumper exhaust into the proper, very normal ones. It's not a gimmick I'm a fan of, but I suppose it made sense to someone in the design process. If you go for a later model, you definitely get better equipment, by the way, like the Torsen LSD from 2010 onwards, and some more modern creature comforts, which make it feel a bit more usable today, as well as an interior design with some features reminiscent of the LFA. You'll find this listed anywhere from around £20,000, with £30,000 getting you a 2008 model with 50,000 miles on it. There are some known build quality issues, and it does consume the consumables very quickly, if driven hard. There are also some known transmission problems, as well as overheating issues as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, a massive thanks to you guys for watching, and of course the patrons for their continued support. And if you want to see some slightly more assuming cars, then click up here and subscribe down here.